Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. This week on our weekly series of electric vehicle content, we are talking high mileage EVs. And specifically, we have two Model S's, both with well over 100,000 miles to talk about, compare, go through the data, the degradation. And then of course, if you own an electric car and are planning on keeping it a long time, this is the episode for you because we're going to go over best practices and tips and tricks to letting your EV reach the kind of mileage that these cars have and well beyond. So let's get into it. Before we get into tips and tricks, we need to talk about the two cars behind me. We have a 2015 Model S 70D with over 150,000 miles. That's pretty incredible. And then of course we have a Model S P85 plus a 2013 car. Uh, and that has about 115,000 miles. So let's first go in because I know everyone will be interested and assess the condition of these two cars before even talking about anything else. So let's go see maybe some battle scars. So let's look around the 70D first of all. This one has just a couple little scrapes and dings and stuff around the car, just general highway mileage. The owner of this car, Brandon Flash, has an awesome YouTube channel where he road trips this car everywhere and he happened to stop into the Inside EV studio and racetrack to show us this thing. So, um, you know, there are some things you can do to protect against this kind of wear, the bugs eating into the paint, the scratches, the swirls, and that's with paint protection film. A lot of owners will elect to, uh, when they first purchase their EV from the showroom floor, bring it to a detail shop, have the paint completely corrected and then protected with paint protection film. And uh, it's something I've done to my uh, Model 3 myself. I think it will help it last a long time and uh, not a huge deal if you don't care about how your car looks. Now come on down the side of this thing. This one has the extremely rare aero wheels. Now this car did not come on these wheels and tires. These were only available for the 2014 model year as a paid option and they're super efficient. They look real funky. I think they look pretty cool. Um, the, this car probably gets pretty good efficiency, but we'll talk to Brandon in a little bit about that. Uh, running down the side, you'll see this car. Oh, the keys aren't on me, but all the door handles work, which is very surprising for a Model S, but it's something you do need to do over time um, is to replace some of the door handle kits. And if you own a Model S, uh, EV Tuning has an amazing rebuild kit that's actually stronger than the factory original. Um, the problem is some of the gears and the motors to move these handles in and out just break, crumble, and the door handles fail. But it's a simple fix from EV Tuning, and I would definitely recommend having you uh, having a kit on hand at all times if you own a Model S. Both these cars here have had many door handle replacements. Around the back, you'll notice this car has a slick top, no sunroof on this particular car, which is probably a good thing because early Model S's have a ton of rattles and water leaks from the sunroof like the 2013, but we're not talking about that car yet. We will. Also coming around the back of this Model S 70D, this particular one has a carbon fiber spoiler, which is not a factory option that was added. I think it looks great. Model S's look great with spoilers. The car looks really nice from back here. And um, yeah, I'd say it's held up visually really well. You'd have no idea this car has the amount of mileage it does, but let's look on the inside. I'm here with Brandon Flash from the Brandon Flash YouTube channel, right? Is yep, that, that's <laughs> there you me. go. Road tripping Teslas like I love to do. And uh, he's going to show us around the interior of his car and talk about some of the wear and tear items. And also, I think it's interesting to note, you purchased this car with 100,000 miles on it, over 100K. It was the cheapest autopilot all-wheel drive equipped Tesla in the country for sale at the time. That's pretty incredible. So you've put 50,000 yep. plus miles. How long have you owned the car? 13 months. <laughs> <laughs> Driving it properly. Yes. So show us around the inside, some of the, the wear and tear components that you have noticed. So coming into the interior, some of the common wear spots are the leather seats. They do have some marks on them just from the in and out. Mine is held up really well on the B pillar here, but that's a common wear spot on these cars. Steering wheels can take a beating. Sometimes these buttons will press in and the, both screens, they're prone to delamination, which means that the outer screen covering is actually separating from the screen material itself. 
leads to a not great looking display. But again, that's a fairly common issue and can be remedied fairly easily. And now I'm gonna take you around the Model S P85 Plus. Both of these cars are actually pretty rare. 70Ds were super uncommon and P85 Pluses was just an expensive option and everything. Just to give you an idea of how much money you could be saving by buying one of these high mileage Model S's, this car was like $125,000 new with 113,000 miles on it now. My dad, yes, this is my dad's car, is selling this for 29 grand. That's like a whole Model S for less than $30,000. And there's plenty of them out there. This is a P85 plus. So you can find 85s and 60s way cheaper too. That's pretty cool. Let me take you around this car, talk about some of the quirks of the early Model S, some of the problems, some of the weird stuff. So this particular car is held up really well. Again, it's a couple years older than Brandon's car. Um, and so this was back when Tesla was still figuring some things out. And on very early Model S's, the original drive units, for the most part, were all replaced on 2012 and 13 Model S's by now. This one had a new rear drive unit in 2015 and actually an entirely new battery pack in 2015, which is very odd and uncommon. Now, all Model S's with the large battery, the 85 kilowatt hour battery from this time came with an eight year unlimited mileage warranty along with the motor. But Model S 60 kilowatt hour cars and 40s and other small battery packs had a mileage cap of 100 or 120,000 miles on it. So be sure to check the warranty status of your car. Now, should you be concerned if you buy one of these out of warranty, I really don't think so. There's plenty of knowledge on Model S chassis by now. I think they're a fantastic option. They're easy to work on DIY and there's plenty of info out there. Now, for the most part, if the battery has lasted this long, it's not just gonna fail on you. Again, generalized statement. They either break when they're brand new, which is very uncommon, or they'll just be workhorses forever. So let me take you around this particular car. This one, uh, again, maintenance wise, really only had the motor and battery replaced. Aside from that, the door handles, this particular one was just recently replaced and the sunroof had to be resealed to the top as because it was skipping and water was getting in, but that's all been fixed and remedied. Um, exterior wise, the car has held up extremely well. The paint on these things, actually pretty good. I think better than some of the new Model 3s that are leaving the factory and um, they feel pretty solid. A lot of these early cars, especially the 2012s and 13s, do have just general interior, interior rattles. So you hit some bumps in it and it just makes general noise, but that's how they all pretty much are. Come take a look at the interior. These older Model S's are pretty interesting on the inside. They have these flat seats that aren't actually as uncomfortable as I would imagine they would be. I did, I don't know, about 2000 miles in the last week and a half in this car and they've been pretty fine. Uh, <laughs> I will say these pre-autopilot Teslas though are a little bit difficult to drive on the highway. I think I'm so used to driving these cars with all the driver assistance aid that when you get into one this old and of this vintage, it just doesn't assist with your driving at all. Um, Aside from that, this car is still on its original screens, its original MCU. And the reason that is interesting is because MCU chips will fail. Uh, Brandon had talked about the delaminating of screens. Well, the internals also have a finite life of read and write cycles before the screens basically brick themselves. Thankfully, Electrified Garage uh, and EV Tuning, they have a solution for this where basically you have a chip in the back that they replace with a higher read-write cycle chip. You're on your way, pretty much 1500 bucks at most, and you're ready to rock and roll. But that's something you do need to plan for with these older Model S's if you plan to drive them a really long distance. Now, Tesla is offering an MCU2 upgrade, which will not have this problem, and you'll have a much snappier response to your UI system, which I would recommend. In the 50,000 miles and 13 months that I've owned this vehicle, I've personally replaced two of the door handles on it. Seven of them have been replaced over the course of the life of this vehicle. The 12 volt battery in this car is about two years old. It's a very common failure on the Model S. It can actually leave you stranded with a dead vehicle in your garage. So when I return from the road trip, which I'm documenting on my channel all around the US, I actually plan on replacing that preemptively so I don't end up with that. Luckily, Electrified Garage does sell a solution. They have both the lead acid and the lithium ion 12 volt replacement. 
the lithium ion is a lot lighter, will last a lot longer. So that's what I'm going with from Omu Batteries. This vehicle has about 8% degradation from the original battery capacity. I actually did do a full range test on this vehicle. I was able to get 208 miles. It was originally rated for 240 miles about 10% give or take uh, when you also factor in the battery buffer that's in it. As far as best, best practices for maintaining the life of your battery, don't charge to 100% daily, charge to either 80 or 90% depending on your needs. And if you're having the vehicle sit for an extended period, just turn that charge limit all the way down to 50% and actually leave your vehicle plugged in. The Tesla battery management system is highly advanced and will actually regulate the battery for you and you don't even have to worry about it a happy Tesla is a plugged in Tesla. Now many of you may be wondering whether on your own personal vehicle or if you're looking at purchasing an EV about how much degradation has this car had. Well, what a lot of people tend to do is they full charge the car and look at the rated mileage range remaining. And they'll be like, oh, this car only shows 240 miles of range. When it was new, it should have had 270 miles of range or whatever the number is. And that is not the way to look at battery degradation. You see the battery, that number is based off of the battery management system's estimation of usable energy inside the battery pack. And the thing is the car never really knows how much energy is in the battery. So the only true way to test degradation is to take a car when new, full charge it, drive it all the way down to zero when it runs out and calculate the, the amount of energy consumed. Then when that car is older, when you're doing your test, of course, you can do the same thing and look at that difference in consumption of energy. Now, it's a little bit difficult if you're just buying a car used, there's no true way to look at degradation. But what you can do is do your 100% to zero test and compare it against results of the battery when the car was new. In the Tesla world, there's a ton of data out there for each battery pack size, or that little number on the screen is a general indication, but keep in mind that can fluctuate in pretty big numbers. So I would say most of these cars, actually both of these in general have held up extremely well. This car only losing about 8%, eight to 10% on Brandon's car and this 85 uh, kilowatt hour pack actually looking like it's only lost about three or 4% best as I can tell uh, on my tests with this car. So this battery pack has held up well, but also keep in mind, it does have a newer pack than when it was brand new. So. I would say degradation, at least in Tesla's, probably something you don't have to worry about too much. Thank you guys for watching this video on Inside EVs. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as a notification bell. Please also check out my channel, Brandon Flash. We look forward to you seeing these videos in the future. If this helped alleviate some of your concerns with high mileage EVs, or if you have any other concerns, please comment down below. Uh, I personally love the mantra of drive more, worry less. That's the mantra I follow in my own car, and I have a lot of firsthand experience with a high mileage Tesla.